In this video, I'm going to walk through some of the basic functionality of an event segmentation chart. I am going to assume that you are already familiar with the chart builder interface, events, event properties, users, and user properties, and how they work together in amplitude analytics. If this is your first time being exposed to these ideas, I recommend stopping and taking getting started with amplitude analytics. In this demo, we'll be using the music streaming app, Amplitunes. Let's say I'm interested in how users are playing content. I'm wondering how users in San Francisco compare with our other users across music genres. In event segmentation, first you pick your event. There's no default event. I'll choose play song or video. You can choose more than one event to view in the same chart. Let's say I wanted to see how playing content related to purchasing content. I could add the event purchase song or video. Next, you pick your users. The default is all users, but I could segment them by a user property and choose a value. So now I am looking at all users who had the user property city equals San Francisco at the time when they fired the play song or video event. And same as events, I can pick multiple user segments. A new segment defaults to all users. And now there are four lines on my chart. Events are referred to by letters and user segments by numbers. So the lines are labeled A1, A2, B1, and B2. This is a bit cluttered, so I will remove my extra segments. If you are working with multiple events or user segments, you may want to consider using a data table. So now I am left with an analysis representing my original question about users in San Francisco playing content. And this is represented as well by the breakout table below the chart. And if I wanted to, maybe I break this out by an event property. Maybe I'm interested in how each music genre is being consumed. I'll break out by genre type, and now I can see which genres are consumed most. There are a few different ways we could visualize this view of our data. We could view it as a stacked bar chart, and it is still broken out by day. We can look at it in a bar chart, and we can see that it is no longer daily change over time. Instead, each bar represents the total unique users firing this event over the whole time period, which is 30 days, and it is broken out by genre. Something to be aware of is that if a user played both pop and rock in this time period, they will be counted twice in this chart, once for pop and once for rock. There is also the horizontal bar chart, which is the same as the bar chart, but horizontal. Horizontal bar charts can be nice if you want to compare two properties. To see how San Francisco compares to other cities, we can create a secondary group by. So you can see that this is grouping by genre first, and then breaking it out by city. So for each genre, you can see which city has the most unique users. But I'm interested more in which genres are most popular in each city. And to do that, I'll want to group by city first. And I can easily do that by reversing the group by order. So now we can see how popular each genre is in each city. This is currently shown as an absolute number, but we could look at a relative percentage instead. These are ways of visualizing the data differently, but you can also change what you're actually measuring. I'll switch back to a line chart showing all users who play a song or video. The default way of measuring songs and videos is uniques, and uniques means the number of unique users playing each song based on genre. So how many unique people played pop, rock, country, etc. Maybe I want to know how many times these songs are played, I can change our metric to totals. This is the total number of times the event was fired. So a much bigger number because many users played more than one song or video in a day. Uniques tells you how many unique users fired an event. Totals tells you how many times the event was fired in total. Active percent is what percent of our users are playing these genres. This is fed by active versus inactive events users who triggered events that are defined as active by your team. If I want to know which genre gets played most often on a given day, I can look at something like average. And you can see that this is all getting at similar questions, but in different ways. 
frequency shows the general distribution. And to demonstrate this, I'll remove my group by. So now I'm looking at the general distribution or frequency of the event play song or video. How many users are playing one song versus 100 songs? How many users are meeting certain thresholds? These buckets are broken out automatically based on the data, but there are options to customize the buckets as well. I'll switch to properties and select the property duration. The property options are all very numerically oriented. So we are looking at the sum of property values. Here we are looking at the duration of the songs or videos that were played. It happens to be in seconds because that is what our property value is. So what if I wanted it to be in minutes instead? That is where I could write a formula. I'll click on the formula tab and enter in prop sum A divided by 60 and click apply. And now we can see the time in minutes. If the out of the box properties aren't getting you the results that you want, you can probably get your results using custom formulas, which is well documented in the Help Center. While we've covered a lot of chart building options for what has been a pretty straightforward query, we've only scratched the surface of the power and complexity of event segmentation, and we have covered only the most popular features. However, this should be enough to get you started in building your own charts and give you a sense of some of the possibilities.